Welcome class to Tech Dweeb's School for Dweebs. I'm your teacher, Tech Dweeb, and we're going to learn about all the important things that dweebs need to know, like which root beers provide the most sustenance, how to talk to pretty girls or boys in a way that won't get you slapped in the face probably, and all the important skills you need to make it in this world, and other things. So sit down, shut up, and pay attention. Hey, I said sit down. Today we're here to learn about one of the best operating systems that you can get on your retro doodads. Sorry open dingux. We are here to talk about Newly, but before we talk about it, let's translate it. Newly is a Swedish word that means uh oh um ne never never mind. <laughs> Don't look that up. Th th this this is a family friendly channel. I wonder if the developers of Newly know what it means. Yes. Yes, they do. With the release of Newly Firefly, I figured it's a good time to finally make a good comprehensive how to use Newly kind of video, which I know you guys have been super excited about. There are lots of emulation station based operating systems for retro handhelds, but Newly is unique because it is a direct fork of Botocera and it's built to support handhelds that none of the other emulation station operating systems support, specifically the Ambernic XX devices and also the TrimUI Smart Pro and the Brick. I love Newly because it's fun, it's easy, and it has all the tools to do everything you could want to do, except for subscribe to TechTweet. Nah. You're on your own for that. Newly is feature rich. It uses an up to date version of RetroArch with all the cores you could want, with optional standalone emulators for lots of systems like N64 and Dreamcast and Nintendo DS and PSP, wireless and Bluetooth support, including Bluetooth audio, retro achievements implemented at the OS level, the ability to scrape your art and screenshots, Poor Master for playing PC games, and we're going to talk about all this stuff. Actually, before I proceed, I just need to take a moment to personally thank the newly developers for all the work they're doing. This is such an amazingly well done project. Everything from the speed of the updates and device support to the responsiveness on the Discord and the incredible documentation. And if you want to support the project and get early access to alpha builds by buying them a coffee, there's a link below. If you want to get a little newly in your life, no, not that newly. You'll need three things. The first is a handheld. The main devices that are supported by Newly are the Amberlick XX devices, also the TrimUI Smart Pro and the Brick. Those are supported. Today I'm going to show you how to do all this stuff on the RG35XXSP, which I call my flip zizzle. The second thing that you'll need is an SD card, or two. And the third is a computer, because you'll need a PC to flash the image on your SD card and also to copy the games to it. I made a full video guide about how to install Newly, so check that out link below if you want to get up and running and you need more information. But here's the super short one minute version. Start by downloading the image which you can find linked in the Newly wiki, make sure you get the correct image for your device, then you'll need to flash that to an SD card using a program like Belena Etcher. Then you can boot your retro doodad with the SD card in to finalize the install, and there is a built-in Linux EXT4 partition on the card, which you can only access with a Linux computer or via Wi-Fi if you have a Windows computer, and that's what I recommend. Once you're up and running, you can connect your device to Wi-Fi and then you can access the storage of the device on your computer by firing up File Explorer and typing slash slash newly in the address bar. And then you'll be able to see the folders on your device like the BIOS and the ROMs folder. And you can just drag and drop your BIOS files and your games into their proper folders. Again, if you need more info, watch my other installation guide linked below. And after that's done, you should have a fresh install of Newly with all your games all, all ready to rock. And now, dweebs and lady dweebs, it's time for the grand tour. This is Newly. You can browse through your game systems. You can press start to open up the main menu to tweak the system settings, which we'll talk about. You can go into a game system and see your games there. And you can press select here to bring up a menu that will bring up some useful stuff. You can filter your games list. So let's say you want to see all your RPG games. You can choose that as the genre. You can also search for a game name here. And then down here at the bottom is advanced system options where you can tweak just settings for this system, which we'll talk about. When you're in a game, you have some useful hotkeys. You can save your state with menu and Y, and you can load your state with menu and X. You can open up the RetroArch menu with menu and B, fast forward with menu and right on the D-pad. Oh, and this is important. If you have a device that does not have analog sticks, you can change the behavior of the D-pad to act as a stick. So hold the menu button and press select, and you'll feel a rumble, which means that it's now acting as an analog stick. And you can press it again, and it'll go back to the D-pad. One more useful shortcut is menu and the power button, which will disable the power indicator LED, which is important if you play in bed at night 
or in a dark pillow for it, like I do. And you can exit your game with menu and start. And if you have it set to automatically save your game, which I'll show you how to set, you won't need to manually save when you exit. It'll do it all by itself. If you ever need to remember any of this stuff, or if you want to see other hotkeys that I didn't mention, make sure to check out that wiki because all the info is in there. Now let's go over the checklist of all the things that I do when I get into a fresh newly installation. This is the stuff that I personally do, my own preferences, which are the best preferences. Let's be real here. I've installed newly on lots of my doodads. I use this on all my XX devices, so I've got this down to a science. Here's what I do every time. The very first thing we gotta do is turn off the front end music. So from the main area, you can press start to open the main menu, then down to sound settings, and then turn off the front end music. Next in the user interface menu, I like to turn off the on-screen help to clean up the home screen, and then I turn on show favorites at top because that's where I want them. Then in game collection settings, I go through and I turn off all the, the stuff that I don't want showing. Newly installs some free stuff by default, but I don't need those things showing in my list. So I turn off Commodore 64. I turn off emulators because I don't need access to those through the front end. I turn off all the ports except for the actual ports, turn off Pi game, and I turn off tools and OD commander. However, if you have RBG on your sticks that you want to control, you, you should leave tools enabled or change your settings and then disable. It. I don't care what you do. I'm not your mother. And, and she doesn't care either. She told me last night when she was over at my place. <laughs> And then in game settings, I turned on auto save slash load and made sure increment per save is selected. And then I also like to turn on toggle fast forward so that I don't have to hold the hotkey to fast forward stuff. And then also in the game settings menu, I'm going to go to the retro achievement settings and turn on retro achievements and type my username and password. And then retro achievements will be enabled for all the games that support it. And one more thing I always do is swap the OK and cancel buttons in emulation station because I'm a PC gamer. I'm used to PC control you can get that option in the system settings. Way down at the bottom is front end developer options. And then you scroll down to switch confirm and cancel buttons and toggle that. Wow, that was actually quite a bit of stuff, huh? <laughs> Are you still with me? Yeah? Okay, good. And now that that stuff is done, you shouldn't need to ever do it again, ever. Until you install newly on your other eight XX Amber Nick doodads, of course. Now let's go over how to tweak stuff for your system, like the scaling options and the on-screen overlays and stuff. You might be used to doing all this through RetroArch, but the beauty of Botocera is that it's all done through the front end, so you don't have to worry about RetroArch configs or messing stuff up. There are two places that you can tweak settings for these options in Newly. You can set up global options, which is done through the main menu, game settings, and in here you'll get access to things like the shaders menu or the decorations. However, I recommend doing these sorts of toggles on a per system basis and really only mess with the stuff as you need to because the defaults are going to be fine for most people. Since I'm using the flip zizzle, which is like a little Game Boy Advance SP, let's take Game Boy Advance as an example. When I launch a game without any settings tweaks, it works great. This is one of the beautiful things about Newly. They, they chose great default settings and no matter which device you use, the settings are logical and well chosen for the screen of your device. Here in Game Boy Advance, it's scaled to fill the whole width of the screen and it has a sharp bilinear interpolation shader applied, which is a fine choice for a lightweight interpolation shader. But there are a few things that I personally like to change for Game Boy Advance. So back in the GBA menu, if I press select, go down to advanced system options. In here, let's turn on the decoration for the bezel. Under decoration set, just choose default newly from the bottom. And then under game rendering and shaders, I'm going to choose the scan line shader. I know scan lines are a CRT effect, but in Bottos Era for handheld systems, it actually does an LCD effect. So now going back to the game, you can see that I have that beautifully nostalgic GBA bezel under the screen, and there's an LCD texture effect on the pixels. So you'll feel like you're playing on original hardware back in 2003, as you watch home movies on the Cartoon Network while downloading Evanescence on LimeWire. There's lots of stuff you can change about lots of the systems. You can swap the default core. You can use other shaders and bezels, lots of these to experiment with. You can toggle rumble, latency settings. You can enable upscaling for the 3D systems, you name it. And then you can also have custom options for specific games if you have some game that you want a shader on, but not others, for instance. When you have a game selected, if you hold down the confirm button, mine is B because we changed it earlier, you'll get the options for that game popping out. This is where you can choose stuff just for that game. 
But what if we don't like these default newly shaders? What if we want to choose our own? Well, ordinarily you would open up the RetroArch menu and choose your shader and save the core override, but that won't work here because newly controls the core settings. What you need to do in this case is go to the shaders menu and select none and then boot up your game. And now you can open up the RetroArch menu and choose your shader and save the core override. And then this shader will be applied every time you choose the none shader from within newly. This is a kind of a more advanced technique and there's lots of those that I won't be able to cover in this guide. So I'll let you figure out the rest of this kind of stuff on your own. You're a smart cookie. I believe in you. And now it's time to go on to a bunch of the extra stuff that you can do in Newly. Only the cool dweebs have game lists with properly scraped art and descriptions and ratings and stuff. And if you want to be cool, well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> to do this, you'll need to do a process that we call scraping which doesn't mean that you have to actually take your handheld and go around and scrape it on stuff. I found that out the hard way. In the main menu, you can go to the scraper option and in here you can customize what is scraped and where it's scraped from. If you don't want to create a screen scraper account, you can change this top option to the games DB, which might be all right. You can try that, but I recommend screen scraper. It's, it's free. Uh, you can sign up and you can use it for free, but you only get a certain number of scrapes per day, which you can increase if you sign up for their Patreon, which is what I do and what I recommend because it's an amazing service and they're doing amazing work. So I'm happy to support them. So let's head into the scraper settings and this is where we'll customize what is scraped. I like to leave all this top stuff on default except for the region. Change this to your actual preferred region, otherwise it might rename some of your games to the European version name or whatever. I'm in Canada but USA is the region that I want because all Canadians secretly wish that they were American. Leave all the rest of this stuff as default. I only recommend scraping videos if you only have a handful of games, otherwise it'll take forever and it'll use a ton of storage. And don't do the manuals, I'll show you the manuals separately. Finally, if you're using Screen Scraper, go ahead and add your username and password there. Back out in the Screen Scraper menu, we're ready to scrape. And make sure to go to the Systems Included area if you only want to include specific systems. Right now I'll just do one system to show you. I'll go with everyone's favorite system for emulation. Virtual Boy, of course. You'll see at the top of my screen that it's doing its thing. This may take a very long time depending on how many games you have. So you might want to start this before bed and, and leave it going overnight. If this gets interrupted or if you run out of scrapes, later if you start it again, it'll pick up where it left off because by default it only scrapes stuff that hasn't been scraped recently. When that's done, make sure to update your games lists from the game settings menu and then when you go in to browse your games, you can see that they all have proper names and each game has some nice screenshot art and you can even see the game ratings and the descriptions. If there are some games that didn't end up getting scraped or if you add new games in the future that need to be scraped, you can do that on a one by one basis. For example, here in Dreamcast, Crazy Taxi isn't scraped. So I'm going to hold the selection button on that game and then I'm going to go to scrape and then it'll detect the game based on the name. If for some reason your game isn't showing up in the list, then maybe your game has a weird file name. So you can go down to the input button and change the file name to something that Scraper will recognize. Then select the game from the list and it'll scrape just that one game. If you appreciate retro games as the pieces of gaming history that they are, the manuals are a huge part of that, in my opinion, which you might not agree with if you're dumb. You scrape the manual the same way that you scrape the rest of the game stuff, but I don't do this for every game because the manuals can actually be pretty big and I've got thousands if not billions of games. So if you want a manual, I recommend doing it on a like one game at a time basis. And you do this by going into the screen scraper settings, turning on the manuals option, then go to the game you want to scrape, hold down the confirm button to open the game menu, go to scrape, pick your game from the list, scrape it. Now when you go into a game with a manual, hold down the selection button and you can see that the option to view it is now there. And look at this. These manuals are like a time capsule. It's so neat to have access to this stuff right on our retro doodads. Pico 8 games are so much fun. They're like modern retro games. But the best way to play them on a retro doodad is with native Pico 8 support rather than through emulation. Installing native Pico 8 on Newly used to be a pain in the beans, but it's way easier now because the Newly devs gave us a built in installer. It will require a few steps on your computer, and they are listed in the Pico 8 section of the Newly wiki. So let's just follow those steps together right now. The first step is to download the Raspberry Pi version of Pico 8. That's not free, but if you've purchased Pico 8, then you can find the link in your email or follow the link from the wiki. 
Once you have that, you'll need to copy the zip to your device the same way that you copy over your games. Open up the share folder on your device, then ROMs, Pico8, and put the zip file in there. Now we need to connect to our device with SSH to run a command. It's easier than it sounds, and it makes you feel like a hacker. Just open up the Windows command prompt and then type SSH root at newly. You'll get a message asking you if you're sure you want to continue, and you type, yeah man, I want to do it. I mean, yes. Type yes. And then you'll be asked for the password, and the default password is Linux. Type that, even though you won't see it, and then press enter. You'll get a big fancy newly welcome screen. And now all we need to do is type install-pico8.sh, and it'll do its thing. When that's done, you can refresh your games lists from the game settings menu, and you should now have the Pico8 official option in the emulator settings. And it even adds Splore, so you can immediately start browsing Pico8 games and playing them right then and there. And if you want to learn more about Splore, watch my Pico8 video where I give you the full tour. Portmaster is a tool that lets you play PC games on your retro doodad. On a fresh newly installation, you'll have a Portmaster installer listed in the port section. Run that and it'll install Portmaster, and then you can fire up Portmaster and start downloading the ready-to-run games. There are tons of totally free games that you can start playing right away, and you can also install other games like PC games. For example, there's this indie game that I like called Baylatro. You probably haven't heard of it, it's pretty underground. So in Portmaster, I'll install that, but it won't work right away because we need to copy over the actual Baylatro game files. Each game in Portmaster has different install steps, so you'll need to go to the Portmaster website, portmaster.games, and go to the game you want, we'll go to Baylatro, and then the instructions for how to install it will be there. For example, Baylatro requires me to copy the baylatro.exe file into the Baylatro folder in my ports directory. So there it is, and now in Newly, when I fire up Baylatro, boom, there we go. I got Baylatro. Noise. Not every game in Portmaster is compatible with Newly, but most are, and the only way to find out which ones work is to try them all. The very last thing that I'll quickly touch on is power. These XX devices are very battery efficient, but if you really needed to squeeze out every last squirt of efficiency, there is some stuff you can do. The first is to open up your system settings and go down to power management and change the battery saving option so it'll dim or suspend or shut down your device automatically if you're not touching it for a while. Oh, by the way, if you have auto save enabled when you power the device off while you're in game by holding down the power button until you feel the rumble, or if it automatically shuts down while a game is on, it will automatically save your spot in the game. Next time you start up that game, you'll be right where you left off. And if you have a flip zizzle like I do, you can go into the system settings and into services and turn on lid shutdown if you want the doodad to just turn off when you close the lid. Again, it'll save your game. The biggest thing we can do to get the best battery life is to change the performance mode. What I do is in the game settings menu, go to power mode and choose power saver. This will lower the CPU power on all systems to save battery. However, some systems will suffer, mostly the 3D systems, so you'll want to go into the individual system settings for that system. For example, here on Dreamcast, press select, go to advanced system options, and then change the power mode here to balance or high performance, your choice, and then this will override the global settings and give you better Dreamcast performance, at the cost of battery, of course. Or you can do this on a per game basis, like I showed you, unless you weren't paying attention. But if that's the case, you watched the entire video, so I'm fine with that. And that's that's it. That's a, It's a bit of a longer video today, but there was lots to show you. Thanks for sticking through the whole video. If you click the thumbs up button, I'll love you forever. And if you don't, I won't. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye